Hello gentle viewers, this is Out Guardian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 22 with the LA Dodgers. And good lord does Bobby Darwin suck, why is he the number 14 overall prospect? I'm sure I don't know. Oh, because he's actually a semi-useful hitter. I see, and if I set you to center field, you're still pretty terrible. But you're less terrible, so that's fun. Oh dear. Um, in our last season, we went 97 and 65. Uh, still not good enough to win the pennant, though. That's unfortunately the the ultimate problem in this era in history, is that only two teams can make the playoffs. And no matter how good you are, unless you're one of the very very best, you're kind of trapped. In this episode. Honestly, we're really pretty solid all across the board. I certainly wouldn't say no to upgrades in a couple of key areas, uh, namely the pitching staff, the pitching staff, the pitching staff, and, wait for it, the pitching staff. If we can get a better rotation, I think we'll be even better. Uh, in the near future. Um, in terms of position players, we probably need to upgrade a catcher. We're getting to the point where eventually Lawler's is not going to be very good. He's actually quite good last season, um, so that's good news. But we probably do need to get a couple more pieces. It's just hard to find obvious places where this roster can be upgraded in a significant way. But maybe I have to be a little bit riskier than I have been. Maybe that's the key to our success as a major league team of baseball. We presently have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have two more seasons with the LA Dodgers. Just two more. 1963 and 1964. So if we're going to win the World Series, we need to do it soon. Because it doesn't count if someone's World Series after I have the team. Um, wait, what? Oh, right, the twin, the Senators become the Twins, don't they? That's right. I was about to say, I didn't win shit with the Twins. Nope. I've got all kinds of World Series titles from franchises that did not exist when I took over. <sighs> Alright, friends, let us Go ahead and do some simming forward. We've got plenty of coaches doing coachy things. Our staff is incredible. You're delighted to be here. It's all good. Maybe good is an overstatement. It's at least acceptable. Al Benton, stay with... Oh, you really don't want to stay with us, do you? You know what? I respect that. I respect that. I respect that you've decided that you'd like to be a man on your own. Hmm. Yeah, I'll offer you 15 grand. That's how much I believe in you, Monty Pearson. So get your head in the game and do what I said. Roy Hughes, has someone really given you a better offer? I don't think they have. I mean, they might have done. They might have done, but I don't think it's even what I wanted you for. If I'm being honest with you. I think I wanted you to be a Yonkers nut, maybe? Oh, there you go. Uh, hey, mate, have 18 grand. Uh, G Pews is kind of a lame nickname. Um, I, I don't mean to be cruel, but it sucks. Uh, Roy Hughes signed, excellent. 
Now, if we could just get Monty Pearson to sign his contract. Go from there. You know what, Al? I wish you the very best with the Tigers. Um, I wish you the very best. Uh, let's find a top GM candidate who really likes development and scouting. Here we go. Chad Barker, welcome to the LA Dodgers. Now, I noticed something a little bit annoying. We're actually over our budget for our team. Which is obviously not an amazing look. Now, Billy Moran is a big problem. We are paying way too damn much money to a player who just isn't that important for us. I have way better things to an 80 grand on. So, Billy Moran, I hope you enjoy your new team, wherever that may be. Um, Raleigh Sheldon. Hmm. Don Choate, I will trade for you. Not because I particularly want you, but because I just want to get rid of the money. There we go. Now we're making a nice profit, and we don't have to cut anybody's budget, and it's going to be great. Ooh, we got a gold glove. Who was it? Sherm Lawler and Mr. Valdivielso. Very nice. I always like seeing gold gloves. I mean, I'm not convinced we can do great things together, but I appreciate your willingness to do it. Yeah, Sam West. Ooh, Lloyd Wainer, go ahead and teach catcher, please. Game, please. Okay. Uh, we're just gonna scoot on along here. Alas, no MVP for Mickey Mantle. That does make me a little bit sad. Who did win the NL MVP award? Uh, you guys made a mistake. And look how close that vote was, right? If one of the weirdos who voted for, say, Bill Mahoncat or Mon Bouquet or whatever for MVP had instead voted for the correct choice of Mickey Mantle, we would have won it. Um, look, I get that Eddie Matthews hit 50 homers, and that's obviously really impressive, and I'm happy for him, but he ain't no Mickey Mantle, who was the better player. By about two wins. So, Eddie, I'm going to need you to go ahead and turn that title over to uh, Mickey Mantle. Thanks. I'm kidding. Like, obviously Mickey Mantle was the better player, but it's a lot closer than it seems, and I'm not annoyed that... I'm a little annoyed, but I'm not that annoyed that the Cincinnati Reds' first baseman... God, it's rude to hear from as anything other than a third baseman. Um... But, but won it, so that's fine. I am, I am okay. And I mean, really, Mickey Mantle's got an argument to be the best player in the history of Major League Baseball in a lot of ways, or he's close to it, so I think he'll do okay. Yes to Jim Bagby Jr. Who else we got? Dom DiMaggio, I don't object to you maybe going at the same time as your brother. So there's one first ballot guy right there in Jolton Joe. Steve Gromack is somewhat close to Hall of Fame, but just not really. Not compared to, say, a Fred Hutchinson. He's had a little bit better career. 
Mm. Max Lanier is very clearly a Hall of Famer. So that's two, no doubt about it, first ballot guys on Joel and Joe and Max Lanier. Henry Majewski. He's no Johnny Johnny Mize. My friend, you're kind of close to being a Hall of Famer. No, you're a Hall of Famer. I don't think you'll get in anytime soon, but I do think anyone who's got 10 gold gloves at third base and still hits well enough to carry that is a Hall of Famer. So that's three first ballot guys on Jolton Joe, Johnny the Big Cat, and uh, Max Lanier. Who else we got? Stubby Overmeyer. Mm. I'll try for Monty Stratton. Why not? Boy, Warren Spawn. You just did not turn out to be a Hall of Famer in this timeline. No, uh, no spawn insane and, and pray for rain for us. That's a shame. Yeah, I think I'm okay with the people I voted for. Um, I mean, I'll give a little bit of love to Wally Udenich, but I don't think it's going to matter. I don't think it's going to get in anyway. Um, yeah, this is good. I think this is this is sufficient. We can cast these ballots and see what happens. We've got three first ballot Hall of Famers. I'm just going to question whether we get anybody else in. There's a couple of people who are close to that 75% mark, so maybe there's going to be something there. I'm not sure. Okay. Mickey Lolich, Jim Wynn, Joe Morgan, Dick Allen, Pete Rose. A pretty strong cook class, and none of those players will fall to me. Not with the 17th overall pick in the draft. I just don't see it happening. I'm not saying I wouldn't be delighted if one of those players fell to me, but they're not gonna. Um, that's just life as we see it right now. So let's let's not waste time guessing. Let's see who does make it to us in point of fact. Wally Bunker? Wally Bunker. Wasn't Bunker a Dodger in real life? No. Wow, he had a very short career. Yeah, Wally Bunker, welcome to the Dodgers. I need starting pitching quite badly. Um, and I'll go ahead and grab Frank Lindsay because who doesn't want an elite reliever? Wade Blazing game. Anytime you get a chance to sign a man like Wade Blazing game, you do it. That's just that's just science right there. And then I kind of don't care, but maybe we'll find a secret megastar. Uh, megastar is overselling it, but Willie Smith is definitely an intriguing hitter. Uh, let's go ahead and grab him. It's future St. Louis Cardinals and white Chicago White Sox manager Tony La Russa. Um, maybe before he gets into all the DUIs, but probably after. Oh, is that mean? It's a little mean, but I think it's deserved. We... Yeah, this is not a draft that's going to move the needle either for or against us making the World Series. Um, I do think Wally Bunker is going to have a role to play on this team just because I just need arms. 
Um, but this is hardly the kind of team that's... It, none of these moves are going to be that important. Um, unfortunately, for better or for worse, it's just not going to matter. Okay, I don't mind if we lose him, but the fact that no one has named him Giggle is just, it's a crime, right? There we go. I feel so much better now. I can now let him go onto bigger and better things if that's what he wants to do. Yep, I'ma just sim forward. How many people made the Hall of Fame, I wonder? Um, you're not terrible. Ah, uh, Willie Smith, you're actually a pretty competent hitter, so let's let you focus on that, where you might actually have a really good shot of making the Major League roster, maybe even this season. Uh, I'm not positive yet, but you'd be an awfully nice bat. Uh, I was right. The the big three all made it, and Monty Stratton was uh, finally made it in after waiting for six years. And I think that's deserved. I think that's deserved. Hey, Warren Spawn got just enough to stay on the roster. Uh, stay on the uh, the Hall of Fame roster, and that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. So before we go too much farther, it is worth asking the question, what the hell are we doing with Felipe Alu? Is there a future for Felipe Alu on this team? Especially in spite of the fact that we have Willie Smith and we have guys like Ed Kirkpatrick. We have other options and we really desperately need an upgrade of the rotation. Um, right now we're, we're putting an awful lot of chips into the Tony Cloninger is going to be okay, actually. Or, sorry, Don Carwell is going to be okay, actually. Like, Stafford is great. Austin has already proven he's pretty good. And so does Cloninger and Belinsky. A very talented, but very young, uh, starting rotation. And I just think if we can find, we're still not great at third base either. Uh, we got a good season out of Dick Williams, but it's clear he's already past his prime. Oh, we also have this happening. Why do I keep doing that? I mean, I'll stop doing it someday, but today is not that day. Um, now I actually get what my scout thinks, and it's about the same. No, it isn't. Fucking game. I don't pay my scouting director to not use him. Please. Uh, okay. Yeah, Dick Williams is fine, but I'd really like to get a better third baseman if one were available. I really like to get a little bit better. Void base. Woody Held is a no, thank you. Jim Baxes is gross. Bill Serrana is not very good. I could get Maury Wills back, except why would I? Um, admittedly, he did start hitting well again when he got over to Cleveland, but let's face it, it's not going to matter. Yeah, there just isn't much in the way of great third baseman that we can get for cheap. 
Um, and that's what creates the issue, right? As much as I would love to trade Felipe Alou for a clear upgrade at third base, the fact is, I don't think there is a clear upgrade at third base. Um, I've got enough depth in the high minors and the outfield that keeping Alou for the sake of keeping him no longer makes sense to me. So I am going to trade him. Um, let's see what kind of third baseman might be available. Hey, Jim Finnegan is a really good defender who's not a great hitter. I, I I don't want that. Thanks, but no thanks. Okay, I'm clearly not having any success here. What if I asked for a pitcher that can start? Yeah, so people don't actually want fully Bayalu. Which is a little sad. Like a guy like Cal McClish wouldn't be awful, but I just I just don't see what I would gain from adding him to the roster, if I'm being honest with you. I don't see how he improves our chances all that much. So I think maybe we just hold on to Felipe Alou and maybe do something else with him in the offseason. Um, yeah, I mean, we're just kind of where we are right now. Really, Alou? Way to tank your trade rating. And that's just kind of where we are. Um, because we're running out of time, and most importantly because we keep winning lots of games, we're never going to have a great draft pick, and we don't really have good trade chits. We don't really have anybody that other teams are like, oh my god, I must have them on my team. And that's our big issue, is I don't have anything I'm willing to trade for a meaningful upgrade. Jim Marshall, maybe, but is anyone going to give me anything for Jim Marshall? I doubt it. I doubt that quite severely. Uh, hey, Wally. Um, I do want to add Willie Smith and Ed Kirkpatrick and maybe even Phil Linz to the spring training roster. I think that all would be fine. Generate. What did you change? You didn't change anything. You just move people around in the lineup. Stafford, Cardwell, Belinsky, Austin, Nixon. No, we're not starting Nixon over Cloninger, are we? But Nixon is just not very good. Like, yeah, you can sit there and tell me, oh, he's got control problems. We're talking about Willard fucking Nixon. Why am I bending that over backwards for him? Like, seriously, dudes. You just don't. I like Tony Floninger. He is a good egg. I mean, Bo Belinsky improving his movement is certainly not something that I am sad about. Like, this is a team that won 97 games. So, it's not like you can look at the roster and see, ah, yes. Clearly, we just need to upgrade at this position and we'll be a guaranteed World Series team. It just doesn't work that way. It really doesn't work that way. How in the hell do you hurt yourself playing poker? Oh, you got into a fight. Mm. Look, it's the Red Dead Redemption solution, right? 
you lose the game and you shoot the person in the face uh, and take your money back. That's how you're supposed to do it, right? Uh, yeah, goodbye, Jack Fisher. That's probably it for your career. Like, I have a very hard time seeing you being an L.A. Dodger uh, in the near future. I just don't see it. So, thank you, good luck, but you're gone. You're gone. Um, Lou Jackson, I don't know how you keep coming back. You must have pictures of somebody important on the team with a farm animal because you just won't leave. Please, I don't need you anymore. Um, oh dear, I have a lot of players who aren't very good anymore. Yeah, so Ned Garver, I need you to leave. How many players out here? I get rid of at least three more pitchers, possibly even four. Willard Nixon, my dude, I know you just pitched 200 innings for me last season. You're just not good enough anymore. So someone else can sign you if they want. Art Mahaffey, I'm going to waive you and try to get you through waivers. I don't need Ed Kirkpatrick right now. This puts me at 12 players. You know what? If I don't need Wally Bunker to start the season, then Wally Bunker is going to go to the minors. And work on his craft and try to be the pitcher we'd like him to be. So it seems that both Willie Smith and Phil Lentz make the roster, and I'm, I'm okay with that. I don't think either one of them is going to have a massive role in this offense necessarily, but it doesn't hurt to have them. It never hurts to have quality depth at major league positions. And yeah, so I am fine with this pitching staff the way it looks. Um, oh, I see. You've actually got Willie Smith listed as a pitcher. Hmm. I'll go with it for now, but I am a little concerned about him pitching too frequently. Oh my gosh, his stamina's one. No, 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 no. Willie Smith, I'm ending your career as a two-way player. I don't want you pitching. You're not good enough. And this then creates an issue where I probably don't have enough pitchers. Because 10 is not enough. So, welcome to the 40-man roster. Actually, Kud is a really good second and third baseman. But Linz is a better shortstop. Jim Marshall, I'm going to trade you and see what kind of pitcher I might be able to grab for you. Like, I'm not even looking for a brilliant pitcher. I'm just looking for somebody who could throw a few innings if we needed that, if we needed them thrown. Harvey Haddock feels like an overpay. Like, given his giant contract and the way it would set up the rest of the roster, I guess it's not a bad thing to have him. Um, Dodger Park isn't a big... Oh, no. Yeah, they're in, they're in Dodger Stadium now. Yeah, it's not a big park for home runs, but I still don't feel like trusting a 37-year-old uh, to do a thing. Let me add in Felipe Alou and see if that changes the game at all. Can I get, like, a good starter? I'm certainly getting more pitchers, um, that's for sure. I can get elite closer Steve Hamilton. Uh, can you just talk to the starters, please? Okay. 
Ralph Bronca, meh. He's not awful. Like, I'd kind of rather have a, a decent starter than an amazing one. Because I really just need somebody who can fill in the back end of the rotation if someone gets hurt or something. Uh, Carl Willie doesn't really do it for me. Duke Moss, not a starter. Tim Paholsky. Tempting, but his movement is just god-awful. I thought that guy's name was Dalek. It's not. I like a Dalek who's very good at playing baseball, what with not having hands. Uh, Paul Toth is not a starting pitcher. I don't know what you're on about. Johnny Cucks. Oh, dear. I'm not touching that one. Yeah. Even 50 grand for Carl Willie feels like a lot, but I don't hate it. And we do need that extra piece in our in our lineup, in our rotation rather. Uh, can I get George Banks, please? Is that within the realm of possibility? Or is that going to be a big fat no? Yeah, you want Dan Ardell? You can have him. Like, I'm not saying George Banks is going right to the major leagues, but he might be. Is he a better hitter than Dick Williams? He's a much better hitter than Dick Williams, but he's also a worse third baseman? I think I'm willing to accept that, though. I think I'm willing to give him a chance uh, in our system. Um, so, okay. So, where is Carl the new guy? Hi, Carl. And, hi, George Banks. Georgie boy, I'm going to let you start at third base. That's how much I think of you. Okay, so now with Carl Willie, I can make him emergency starter long reliever, and I feel better about our depth in the pitching rotation. All right, let's nuke all this. Burn it to the ground. Murder everything. And then immediately say, Mickey Mantle, I choose you. I will always choose you. You are the wind beneath my baseball wings. Mini Mignoso, I think, has to be leadoff. No, Waldo Vilso can do that. And then I can let Mignoso bat second, where he was born to hit. And it's going to be great. Uh, batting cleanup. Is Bobby Thompson? No, Jackie Brandt is a more consistent hitter. I've got to trust Brandt to do that. And then Bobby Thompson can hit fifth. Thompson. Uh, Tony Kubak hits sixth. George Banks hits seventh. And the Shermanator hits eighth. Hal Smith is the backup, and it's going to start once every 10 games. Backup at first base is going to be Dick Williams. Dick Williams is going to be backup at first and third. Good old Coot is going to be backup at second base. And Phil Lins is going to be backup at shortstop. Uh, Willie Smith is going to back up in the corner outfield positions, and Dan Dahlbeck is going to back up at center. Phil Lins is going to learn second and third. 
and Coot will back up it short. As far as my pinch hitters go, uh, Willie Smith is number one. Then Phil Lenz, then Dick Williams. Pinch runners, we still don't really have any. Like, I don't have any base dealers that can come in off the bench. I mean, I guess Phil Lentz and, and Willie Smith are decent. We'll give them both a shot. And I think we have your starting Dodgers. George Banks could either be a gigantic boon to this lineup, or he could suck it down into the muck. And I don't really know which he's going to do because he's not a very good third baseman. Um, but I'm hoping that his bat will will assist us. And we can always let the coot be a defensive upgrade at third base if we need him to be. You gotta love a man who's just 30 years old and is already being called coot. You know that as a, an individual of the highest integrity. To be sure. Yeah, we're running into the same problem that every team we're going to play with and this era is. Uh, oh no. Anyway. Uh, namely that the older, uh, the older this team gets. Um, ooh, look at Wally Bunker throwing harder. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Um, what was I trying to say? Um, it's, it's going to come down to, do we have enough depth? And the answer just unfortunately is almost always going to be no, we don't. Um, but that's because it's just so hard to find top quality players <clears throat> anywhere other than trading or free agent or trading or the draft. And we frankly don't have. Oh, that's a career under, isn't it? I feel that in my bones. I feel it in my bones. We're going to regret this. Uh, we're going to keep on keeping on. Yep. Oh, Don. Well, I sure didn't count on letting Carl Willie be a starting pitcher, but here we are. Wally Bunker, you're a starting pitcher. Don't let anyone ever tell you different. I mean, if I call up Wally Bunker, I'm gonna want him to start, but I think I'm I think I'm okay with that. I think he's shown enough that he can start. So, Wally. Welcome to the Dodgers. I hope you enjoy your stay. I will look to see if there's a decent starting pitcher on the trading block, but to be quite honest with you, I don't even know what we would trade to get someone. Like, Vinegar Bend would be a nice get. He's a very solid all-around starting pitcher. I just don't know what I can offer the Pirates to get him. But I would feel a little bit better with him in my rotation than someone else. I'm going to wait, though, and I'm going to see how Wally Bunker can manage. And see if he can be a stabilizing force. But, um, yeah... I am not overwhelmed with optimism. Damn, Banksy. I feel really bad for Don Cardwell. I mean... It, 
it wasn't that long ago he won the Mikey Smith Award. And I don't regret drafting him where I did. But alas, um, it just wasn't in the cards for him. It's a shame. I mean, he wouldn't be eligible for the Hall of Fame because he hasn't been in, in the league long enough. Um, but there, it's a real shame that he ended up retiring. But it is what it is. Uh, Tony Cloninger is throwing harder but with a lot less control, so that's fun. Well, Wally Bunker's getting a little better in a couple ways. Frank Lindsay is throwing harder. Cool. So what's going on, guys? Why are we looking so poopy? Um, it could be the fact that nobody on the team is hitting, like, at all. I mean, Mickey Mantle is at least a shadow of his former self, but the rest of the team is just very yikes right now. Um... Gross. Um... Pardon me. Oh, goodness. Oh, pardon me. I thank goodness for Tony Kubak, who is single-handedly keeping this team respectable. But he ain't gonna hit 360 all season. Uh, I can guarantee you that. The Mick is doing fine. I'm not... Like, I'm not looking at this guy and being... Are you fucking kidding me? He's the worst. I hate him. Um, He's not borderline MVP level, but he doesn't have to be. I mean, he does have to be if we ever want to be a top-tier team, though, is the issue. Um, Mini Mendoza's showing his age. Um, Jackie Brandt is having a really bad season. I mean, there is every possibility that all these players that are having bad seasons could just turn it up and start hitting balls out. Uh, the only one that I don't think is going to improve a huge amount is Sherm Lawler. Um, so, I mean, I guess we could call up Ed Kirkpatrick and let him play catcher. Although he's not great at actually blocking the plate. Um, so that is a little bit not great. I'll tell you what we'll do, and I don't think this is going to make any difference whatsoever, but we're going to try it. I'm going to let Tony Kubek lead off. And we're going to see if that kind of fires up the rest of the team. Twenty five hundred hits for Bobby Thompson. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Um, I would like to bring everyone back. Bring back every coach forever. Uh, look, Tim Kimball, I can bring you back. Um, I don't feel like moving on, and I don't know that I'd find a great replacement if I did, so... Who made the All-Star game? Fred Green, an absolute lad. Tony Kubek, Mickey Mantle. And that's it. 
three Dodgers made the All-Star team, but two of them were starters. Um, I certainly can't argue with that. Oh, Lawler's defense is slipping. He's quickly becoming something that I can't keep having on the team. Um, it's at least worth exploring an upgraded catcher. I feel. I feel it's something we kind of have to do. Yeah, Banks, I admire your enthusiasm, but I kind of think we have to go back to Dick Williams. Like, I'm not saying that Dick Williams is a flawless player, but he's much more well-rounded than you. So we're going to do one of these. But it's okay, because I'm going to let you be a pinch hitter. Um, but yeah, I think I need to bench you. I don't think I can carry you on the roster any longer. Um, get, but Banks, we do fucking go where you're told. What the hell? That is so bizarre. It's just like, no, Dick Williams must always be a pinch hitter forever and ever. And I'm like, or not. How, how does that sound? How about not? Um, look, Hal Smith is an awful catcher, so we definitely don't want to keep him either. But I want to try to get an upgraded catcher if I can. Especially if I can get one on the cheap. Hi, Roger Maris. Uh, I wouldn't mind having you, but I don't have anything I can trade to grab you. Okay. So let's, let's talk about the possibility of acquiring Roger Maris. He's a big-time bat with big-time power, and we don't have one of those right now in the center of our lineup. The downside of Roger Maris is I don't know where we'd play him, because I certainly wouldn't play him in left. Would I trade him for Jackie Brandt straight up? I would actually. I would trade Jackie Brandt for Roger Maris. If that trade would work for the Cardinals, it would work for me. I'm just not convinced that it would. But let's try it. Let's kick the tires. It wouldn't take much more than that. Um, It would not take much more than that. You know Bobby Darwin. Do you have a catcher I could get you to throw in, please? I mean, obviously, I'd love to get Joe Torre. You're not going to give me Joe Torre, are you? Let's just see, right? No. Okay. What about John Romano? And what if I offered you Sherman Waller? Um, mm -mm. can I get Joe Tory? So here's the other consideration before I try to pull the trigger. I can't risk making the Cardinals better. 
So I have to be certain that Roger Maris makes us better than giving away Jackie Brantwood, and I don't think it does. I think I have to stick with the American League if I'm going to make a trade where it's less likely to bite me on the ass. Jim Landis has nothing to write home about. Gross. Like, honestly, right now, Joe Garagiola seems like the best chance to upgrade my catching right now, and even he's not great. Hmm. Catchers, please. I mean, I could just trade for the next firm Lawler, but he's out for two months. Yeah, I'll trade for Garagiola. I should be able to get him for pretty cheap. Yeah, I can trade a bad uh, relief pitcher for you. Was it Garagiola a Dodger way back when? Didn't I just bring him home? Yeah, he was. <laughs> Welcome back, Joe. Um, Joe Mama. Uh, is anybody still interested in Sherm or in Hal Smith, maybe? What could I get if I traded Mr. Hal Smith? I can get a whole bunch of uninteresting players. Woo. If I traded Smith and Lawler, does it move the chains at all? It sure doesn't. Then let's just trade Smith and try to get a prospect. Um or even a, a regular, someone with a minor league contract, and then we'll just move on. Because I just really don't want him on my team anymore. Nelson Chittum is an interesting reliever, but I just don't need more relievers, I don't think. Let's take Ed Donnelly. And then we have a 37-year-old backing up a 38-year-old. Or a 38-year-old backing up a 37-year-old, which is pretty funny. Uh, but that's what it is right now. Garagiola, quite simply, gives us a better chance to win than Lawler does. That's just how it is. Uh, let's play some more baseball games. Wally Bunker's stuff is getting better. That's not a bad thing by any stretch. Tony Kubek is getting better. So, we're, as a team, hitting much closer to where I thought we would be hitting. So that's the good news. Um, the good news is we're heating up at the right time. The bad news is I, I don't feel safe with this at all. I don't feel safe. So I'm hoping that we can get even hotter in the month of August if we're going to have any chance of making the playoffs. So we're going to keep going and we're going to see where that gets us. We could go on a nice little run, separate ourselves, nope, we're separating ourselves in the wrong way. God damn it, game. God damn it. 
I mean, nice work, Wally Bunker. Um, but also, yikes. We're only four games out. Um, anything could happen. For sure. I just don't think it will, necessarily. Really? Really? Game, please. We were... Oh, my God. Three games out. Three freaking games out. Man. I can't even be upset because we're literally going to win 95 games. And it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, that's not very nice of you. I didn't give you permission to retire. Uh, hey, bud. Welcome to AAA. Really? Yeah, Babe Herman's not that exciting. Neither is Eddie Mor Morgan. I guess we just find a new pinning coach. I have we'll wait till after the season for that. Well, good for the Pirates, I guess. Um, hooray for them. I, and my scouting director retired. Man. Whatever. I don't even care. I do like Joe Morgan ending up with the Houston Colt 45s. That just feels right. Because that is actually who he played for before he ended up going over to the Big Red Machine and playing on all those fantastic um, Reds teams. Give me Earl Clark. Um, could we have done anything different? I mean, I could have replaced, um, Kirk sooner. Uh, Mr. Kirk was obviously just not ready for, or Banks was not ready for the big leagues. Uh, I accept that. Let's see what went well and what didn't go well. Let's check the stats. Uh, Mickey Mantle was pretty great again. Pretty, pretty great. Will he be the MVP again? I sure don't know, but I wouldn't bet against him because he continues to be an, an amazing player. Um, Tony Kubek took a ginormous leap forward. And if you look at his raw numbers, it's not obvious how he did that. Other than just hitting more doubles than he did the season before. Um, but his power was up just a skosh. His on-base percentage up just a skosh. Average up just a skosh. So what change? He was a good defender, but it's not clear to me why he's rated so much higher this season. Unless it's just that, as a whole... Offense, offenses were just not as good as they were in the past. I think that's likely what happened. But regardless, Valdivielso turned it around toward the end of the season. He was getting on base at his normal excellent clip. And he has all the power of a wet noodle, but that's how he's always been. Minnie's definitely trending in the wrong direction. Um, this is definitely one of the worst years of his recent career. And he's 37. Um, so we probably want to think about upgrading a first base if we can. Bobby Thompson and Joe Gragiola both did okay. George Banks was thought of being the better third baseman. So maybe I should have just trusted him a little bit more, but maybe not. 
Yeah, we got a lot of really solid play out of a lot of really solid players, and it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough. In a league where we're having multiple 50 homer hitters, our best hitter hit 37, and that's just not going to cut it. Uh, maybe we should have gotten Roger Maris. I don't know. I just didn't want to take a chance on making the Cardinals good enough to the point they kicked me out. Uh, Bill Stafford had a second consecutive incredible season and was a true staff ace. Um, you love to see that. Bo Belinsky uh, built on his solid rookie season by just basically doing more of that. Um, I don't love his control, but as long as he's striking people out at this rate, we can maybe make that work. Tony Cloninger just basically stayed healthy and showed he's um, okay. Wally Bunker got pretty hot toward the end there, but otherwise wasn't that incredible. And Claude Austin was just a little bit worse than last season. In reality, he just didn't strike out enough bats, and when your strikeout rate drops by that much, you don't have a lot of margin for error. And Fred Green was incredible. Just outstanding in the bullpen. So our problems are our problems. We don't have big time, big game pitchers other than Stafford. And two of our starters are very badly flawed because they don't throw strikes regularly. Now, Mr. Cloninger still still had 19 wins, so he's going to look better than he actually was. But the number I'm most concerned about is 114. So we kind of find ourselves where we did last season. We won a whole bunch of games, mostly because of Mickey Mantle rules. And it didn't actually matter. And that's just where we are. We need to find a starting pitcher. We need to find somebody we can trust who can be a premier backup to Mr. Stafford. Um, like, Belinsky and Cloninger are just too similar, and Belinsky's by far the better pitcher of the two. So, I mean, I'm not going to kick him out of bed, but I, I don't really want to keep them if I don't have to. Claude Austin seems to be settling in 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 the worst sense of the term and that he's just kind of settling for where he is now and he's not really pushing himself to be the best he can without fred green and mickey mantle i don't know where the la dodgers are but it's certainly not winning 94 games um before we end today's episode because there's only one more season left next episode will be the final episode with the dodgers it's worth thinking about what team we go to next so let's take a look you can maybe let me know down in the comments if you have a strong opinion. So we go by worst teams in Major League history. Obviously, one of the expansion teams would be a fair bet. And I am not opposed to that. I am not opposed to taking over an expansion franchise. Because beyond that, um, there are the Tigers, of course. We could go back and, and try to take them over. I don't want to stay with the Dodgers. Um, I never want to repeat teams if I don't have to. Um... I mean, the Colt 45s are really tremendously bad, which actually makes them somewhat intriguing to me. Like, can you imagine if we take over an expansion team and take them to the playoffs, how cash fucking money we would be? So friends, I will leave you three options in the comments. And based on what you all say, I'll decide who I'm going to pick. 
Either the Houston Colt 45s, hang on a second. Are they the A are then the AL they're in the NL? They're in the NL, okay. So oh that doesn't really matter. Um, except for the fact it's gonna be really hard to make the playoffs in the National League, especially compared to the American League. But actually both are kinda of scary, so we're kinda of stuck whichever. Uh, so anyway, the teams I'd like to take over are the Houston Colt 45s, the LA Angels, or the Detroit Tigers. Those are the three teams that I'm most interested in taking over and trying to take to the next level. So, let me know what you think, my friends. Uh, which of those teams sounds like to be the most fun for you to watch? Um, I'm really leaning, leaning towards one of the expansion teams. Uh, I think that would be a fun challenge to basically get to build a team the way I want to from the ground up. But I will listen carefully to your comments and make an informed decision. And I will announce which team I'm picking at the end of next week's episode. Hmm. Excuse me. But until next time, my friends, this has been Outgarden. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.